Hello everyone. This video is brought to you by Newton's group of institutions. This is Arvind Egreddy from Department of CSC. In this video, I'll be talking about the software engineering practice. So we know that a practice is a broad array of concepts, principles, methods and tools that we must consider as software is planned and developed. So it represents the details, the technical considerations and that are below the surface of the software process. So the things that we need to build is a high quality computer software. Here the following lists the generic framework that is communication, planning, modeling, construction and deployment. And we also have an umbrella activities like tracking, risk management, reviews, measurements, configuration management, reusability management, work product, creation and product, uh, what we have discussed uh, in our last video. So these are all found in all software products. So here, George Pole in his book, he described the essence of software engineering practice is to understand the problem, to plan a solution, carry out the plan and examine the results for accuracy. So coming to understand the problem, it is worth spending a little time to understand and answering few simple questions. So who has to stake the solution to the problem? That is who are the stakeholders? So the stakeholders, I mean to say that they are the people who are directly or indirectly involved in that project and who will use the software or a product or who can give us some advices. Then we need to understand what are the unknowns, what data, functions and futures are required to properly solve this particular problem. And we need to see whether the problem can be compartmentalized. That is, can we represent the problem in small, small parts so that it will be very easy to understand. Then we need to understand whether we can represent the problem in a graphical notation so that we can analyze the model and the analysis model be created. Then we need to plan the solution. So once after understanding the problem, we cannot just write, uh, just like that, we can write the code. So before writing the code, what we need to do is, we need to design it. So to design it again, you need to ask some questions. Uh, whether you have seen the similar problem before, and if you have seen the patterns, what you used in your previous problem, whether that can be the potential solution to this particular problem or not. If there exists a software that implements the data functions and features that are required. And have you ever solved the similar problems? If you have solved the similar problems, whether the solutions what you have used that the same solutions can you apply here to this particular problem? So all these questions you need to ask uh, yourself. And you also need to understand whether you can see the subproblems be defined. If so, the solutions readily appear in for the subproblems. Then once after that, you need to carry out the plan. So now you need to implement. So here, does the solution what you have been designed whether it is conformed to the plan or is the source code trackable back to the design. That is what you need to understand. So is each component of the solution correct? Has the design and code being reviewed or better? So these are the questions what you need to ask yourself as a best engineering practice. Then you need to examine the problem. So you cannot be sure that your solution is perfect, but you can be sure that you have designed a sufficient number of tests to uncover as many errors as possible. 
so it is possible to test each component part of the solution and has a reasonable testing strategy being implemented and as the solution products results that conform to the data functions and features that are required and has the software been validated against all stakeholders requirements so you need to understand that whether the solutions what you have been identified are acceptable to all stakeholders who are directly or indirectly involved in that particular problem here david hook has proposed seven principles that focus on software engineering practice as a whole so these are called as the general principles and they are as uh, follows so the first principle is that the reason is all exists so here a software system exists for one reason to provide value to its uh, users so before specifying any system requirements or before noting a piece of system functionality or before determining the hardware platform or before development process we need to ask ourselves questions such as does this requirement add any real value to this system if the answer is no do not do it all other principles support this particular law now coming to the second one that is the second principle kiss keep it simple stupid so there are many factors we may be considering in any design effort so all design should be as simple as possible so this helps us in more easily understanding and easily maintaining of the system so indeed the more eligible designs are usually more simple ones so the payoffs is software that is more maintainable and less error prone coming to the third principle we need to maintain the vision so a clear vision is essential to the success of any software project if you don't have any vision then there is a more probability that your software will fail so if you neglect the architecture vision then the software system weakens and will be eventually break even the well defined system you have designed so maintenance of good architecture vision ensures a very successful software project coming to the fourth principle what you produce others will consume so here keeping the design in the mind of implementers we need to code with the concern for those that must maintain the extents of the system so someone may have to debug the code you write and that makes them a use of your code so this makes the job easier and adds value to the system coming to the fifth principle be open to the future so a system with long lifetime has always more value so it is better that you never design yourself into a corner always ask the question what if and prepare all possible answers by creating such a system that solves the general problem so this could very possibly lead to reuse of the entire system now coming to the sixth principle plan ahead for reuse so planning ahead for reuse reduces the cost and increases the value of both the reusable components and the system into which they are incorporated and the seventh problem or the seventh principle is think so here this last principle is probably the most overlooked so placing clear complete thought before action always produces better results so when you think about something you are more likely to do it do it right okay thank you if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for the latest 
notifications. Thank you all.